welcome to Made in Alberta. As most of you probably know by now, the world is getting together in a few weeks to negotiate the next phase of our agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This political process began at the first conference of the parties in Kyoto, Japan in 1997. But our understanding of the world's climate and how it is changing comes mainly from a scientific organization called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, is a body that was established by the United Nations, the World Meteorological Organization. Um, and it, it has three working groups. There are hundreds of scientists who compile each IPCC report. And before these reports are released to the public, thousands more scientists check them for accuracy and authenticity. This is called peer review. Each working group reports every five years on essentially the state of knowledge in those three areas. And each report has say on the order of 20 chapters. In each chapter there's usually three lead authors and maybe 20, 30, 40 contributing authors and then the chapters are sent out uh, for peer review by probably on the order of a hundred more people around the world. The first IPCC report was released in 1990 to warn us that the recent rise in average global temperature readings may be caused by human activities and this could cause climate changes. In the latest report, in 2007, the scientists say we are very likely the cause of a continuous global warming trend. Each report has got progressively more confident in terms of its statements about, uh, yes, we think it's very clear that there is an anthropogenic fingerprint on the climate change that's taken place. Uh, in the last year in Adelaide, we've had two heat waves that have been a one in 1,000 year event where we've had uh, something like five days over 40 degrees and in that period, 15 days over about 36 degrees. Uh, I have a thermometer on my roof, it hit 50 degrees. So we really are starting to talk about that in conjunction with a severe lack of water. The issue of global warming and climate change continues to divide our society. But the solutions have a tremendous unifying force. Well, in a short space of time, we've changed every light bulb we could possibly find to be more energy efficient. We've got the world's first solar-powered electric bus. We're going to uh, change uh, all our management systems so that we can use elect less electricity. And the money we're spending, we'll actually pay back in about four years and then start making a profit with money that we can then put back to community grants so the community can follow our lead. I think we should um, share cars or use transit and subway like New York because it's better than just using one car if you're just alone and not married. Join us next time as we explore the question, do you have to believe in climate change to believe in climate change solutions? Mm -hmm.